Hey, good morning, everyone. We are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer to talk about the markets. And Jim, let's begin with Arconic's earnings. Yeah, look, Arconic looked very good. Now, the problem is Arconic does not have a CEO yet. They have an acting CEO, very good one for United Technologies. I like the global uh, rolled number. That was a little better than expected. Obviously, the earnings itself are better than expected. They do have a, uh, a response to um, the sheeting that caught, caught fire mm -hmm. in London. Overall, the thing you want to see here is what does Elliott say about it? LA Partners, uh, driver, part of why uh, Klaus Kleinfeld was ultimately fired, mostly because Klaus said some stupid things, not because anything that, our, that Elliot did. But uh, we own it for our charitable trust, and I feel very good about the, uh, about the longer-term forecast. These day-to-day, -day, very hard to judge. If they get the right CEO in there, you really could clean up. We'll be watching for your bulletins. Absolutely. All right, let's move on to Halliburton's quarter. You know, like, Halliburton was a good quarter. Now, on the conference call, they talk about, you know, uh, uh, like Union Pacific, uh, some of these companies have such a strong quarter, they don't want to necessarily say it can continue. I urge people to go to Schlumberger's quarter or to read my real money piece about what Schlumberger's saying. Schlumberger had been the most bearish. They're turning and becoming more bullish. Against them is Rusty Brazil at RBN Energy, a must-read, who is saying, don't forget, when it gets to 50, they sell the futures again. 4350, 4350, 4350, something that our own expert, Carly Garner, certainly agrees with. Yes, and we have an OPEC meeting in the background. And the OPEC, it's not OPEC, it's, it's non-OPEC non and OPEC in St. Petersburg. Uh, there, the problem are, are two countries, Libya and Nigeria, that are so hobbled by internal issues that the, that the OPEC countries are not willing to crack down on them, particularly the Saudis. The Russians are supposed to be exerting a lot of discipline. I find that to be uh, kind of, well, their discipline is uh, reckless to me. Hey, Caterpillar was upgraded by BMO. Yeah, now Caterpillar is a company that if you believe the longer, uh, the numbers that BMO puts up, the numbers are sharply higher than expected. And there they're focused on a couple of things. They're focused on a big cyclical comeback. That would be uh, oil, that would be minerals, that would be road building. And they're talking about streamlining, which is uh, definitely something that has been happening. They've taken a lot of costs out. Where they're missing is, I think that this weak dollar is going to be a very interesting story for them. Remember, they go against the yen for a lot of things because they go against Komatsu, and the translations might be better. Um, Caterpillar has now moved up gigantically, uh, so uh, even though it could be up again, uh, my advice is you kind of missed it. Mm. Meanwhile, KKR buying WebMD. WebMD is one of those stories where it's been up, up, up. So I thought that for sure it was going to be bought. I didn't think it would have such a premium. Uh, a couple billion dollar deal, uh, uh, an under-monetized asset, if you ask me. Wedbush saying that Amazon's revenue will top estimates. Yeah, week. I don't like this kind of call because what happens is then a lot of people just start buying calls and a lot of people come on my Twitter th uh, and just say, hey, Jim, should we buy Amazon, we buy Amazon, buy Amazon. I haven't think Amazon's a long-term buy. But you know what? now you want to buy half. It, when you get that kind of uh, coming in hot, you buy half and then you buy other half after because I still believe in the world domination theory. Meanwhile, Goldman, RBC, and Oppenheimer bullish on Blue Apron. Yeah, I think they kind of have to defend it down here. I mean, because the stock has just been completely hammered. But the up, the um, bullish uh, commentary reads as if Amazon doesn't matter. And I, I think that we see from Home Depot like, down again. What we see from uh, Macy's, uh, what we see from anybody who's really been challenged, with the exception of Walmart, by Amazon. Uh, you're catching a falling knife, and that's just not something I can advise. What are you going to make for Blue Apron? Uh, Goldman thinks you can go back to 11. I don't know how it does that. The, it would have to be a model like Grubhub, which really surprised people and came back, but I would not. But Grubhub is a very superior operator. Blue Apron has a lot of imitators. Now, a lot of people feel that what that does is make the category better. What it says to me is that you're going to spend a lot more money and not have the return. I don't like Blue Apron. And then on Mad Dash on Squawk in the Street, you talked about Hasbro. Yeah, I mean, look, I've got uh, Brian Goldner tonight. It's just going to be very important. Hasbro's down very badly. The numbers were not what I expected or anybody else expected. Uh, let's see if they can't have, uh, when I speak to Mr. Goldner, uh, an explanation plus uh, an outlook for Qs 3 and 4 that might be a little better, and maybe it's an opportunity. I wouldn't write it off yet. All right, that's tonight, Mad Money, 6 p.m. Eastern. And yeah. then on Stop Trading, you talked about Constellation Brands. Yeah, you know, Judy Hong, whom I've liked very much, I mean, sometimes, you know, look, these are analysts who've been at it for a very long time. She talks about the slowdown in beer in the category and craft beer, and she downgrades uh, Sam Adams to an outright sell. She says that the real weakness, again, is Coors and Bud. But because of the uh, import, uh, 
Constellation had kind of a windfall with the collapse of the peso. Peso's gone from 21 to 17, so therefore she thinks that maybe it won't be as strong. You know what, that may be true, but Constellation's doing a lot of things to be able to get away from just Modelo, Corona, and by the way, Modelo, Corona, uh, and then watch Pacifico. Pacifico's been growing. If STZ gets hit, that's an opportunity. All right, we have a few companies reporting earnings on Tuesday that Jimmy want to get your thoughts on. First up, Domino's Pizza. Uh, Domino's Pizza, uh, this time was not rumored down. Uh, Domino's Pizza is a technology company that sells pizza. Uh, the stay-at-home thesis is still very good. Here's another example. The stock has run, so you only put half on if you're going to buy, and then you wait to see if the bears knock it down. But the long-term trends are very good. They have a fantastic asset light model. All right, one more McDonald's. You know, I think McDonald's has had a big run. But every time it's had a big run, Steve Easterbrook then shocks you with something new. They're going to have good affinity. I think they're going to talk about a rollout of affinity plan. I think the comp store sales numbers are better. Uh, don't forget, that's also a great weaker dollar play. And then lastly, Chipotle. Okay, Chipotle, you know, I, they have a, um, what can I say? Uh, I had felt that after 18 months after the norovirus incident on December 7th of, of uh, 2015 at Boston College, that uh, you could toll it and say 18 months later they're fine, but uh, the toll started again with this most recent thing, so it's not a buy. Wow. All right, Jim Kramer, thank you so much as always. All right, for more information on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.